How you doing? This is JC at JC's Comics More, your pop culture superstore, 6725 West Central Avenue, Toledo, Ohio, 4361 7419 531 We're looking at uh, some of the creatures on the loose, and we've got other creatures on the loose here as well that we're going to uh, be going through. So we're going to be uh, checking uh, checking these books out and uh, going going from there. But this uh, first one is uh, The Coming of King Cole. Uh, it was artwork by Bernie Wrightson, written by Roy Thomas. It's great early Bernie Wrightson artwork from Marvel. And this led into the King Cole series. Has the backup stories. Uh, that's Jack Kirby. So you get these monster backup stories. This was before uh, Kill Dozer. Issue 12, this is all reprints. It's got Corilla. You got the Sid Shore story, Master and Slave. You got Frankenstein, you got Igor. It has a very uh, shock ending to it. Enough, monster. I created you to be my slave, and you must serve me. Poor fool, you still do not how are you you were used. The brain, Igor. Remember that convenient brain? That's all I'm going to say about that. Then we have Creatures of the Lucia of Gulliver. Warrior Mars uh, took over for a short period of time. Um, based on the novels by Edward L. Arnold. Get this Gil Kane artwork in Roy Thomas. Roy Thomas loved these sword and sorcery uh, stories. And Gil Kane's artwork fit them perfectly. Look at these giant slugs. Again, you got these backups. You got Don Heck backup in here. You got Kirby backup. Some giant aquatic monster. Again, the reds, the blacks, it pops. Gulliver Jones, Warrior Mars. Everybody need to do their, their Mars story. This has artwork by the great Ross Andrew. Got a Tyrannodon looking uh, individual there. It's hard to uh, mistake in Ross Andrew's artwork. Again, you've got uh, these, these backup stories in here. Yeah, Steve Ditko, What Lurks in the Mountain. Indeed, What Lurks in the Mountain. Ah, of course. Shock ending. Another Gil Kane cover. I wonder who did the artwork on this one here. Ross Andrew did the last one. And now we got Wayne Boring, Jim Mooney, and Gil Kane. So three issues, three different artists. Wayne Boring uh, did uh, Superman for a very long time for DC. And he's come over to Marvel now. And he hasn't lost his touch at all. Yeah, Kirby and Ayers, Dick Ayers. Again, these old, these old monster stories, classic. Even this, uh, this I guess you would call it rust colored, uh, really, really stands out. Monster and the Maiden. Gray Merrill did the artwork now. So again, each issue kind of as it changes. You know, again, you got musical chairs as far as the uh, as far as the artist, but Gray Merrill is just a he's a classic artist within himself. I mean, he's known for uh, his uh, Zatanna's from DC and his beautiful women as well. Very natural looking. Yeah, it looks like we got a is this Don Heck. Certainly looks like Don Heck. And you got another Steve Ditko uh, story with uh, For Whom the Drum Beats. Issue 21 we're missing, but uh, issue 22, uh, Thongar, Warrior of the Lost, Limeria has come on board. And uh, I think this is uh, Robert E. Howard also. 
No, Lynn Carter. This is Lynn Carter and all these uh, uh, sword and sorcery books back then. Okay, there's a Steve Ditko story. Classic. This is classic. Just this, this stuff is it, it's it's so good. And again, I don't think it's ever been reprinted. Got a John Romita cover here. Got Val Merrick doing the art. Eventually did his uh, artwork on uh, uh, Kazar. I think that's the first time I really became aware of his artwork. The Coming of Giants. This is a really interesting story. It's this giant satanic uh, monster creature. Another uh, John Romita cover. Attack of the Lizard Hawks. More Ditko, Lighthouse from Nowhere. Okay, where's these lizard hawks at? There they are. People, people enjoyed those dinosaur stories. Issue 125, unfortunately, is torn, which is really too bad because it's in nice shape, but unfortunately, there's not much value to it, so I guess it doesn't really matter. That's the first couple pages, but you got giant dinosaurs in here. Fighting, fighting off uh, killer plants. That dinosaur is unamused by his sword. But the wizard shows up and he puts him down. Again, the reds, the yellows, the blues. Sword and sorcery in the tradition of Conan. This here looks uh, looks a little bit like Ramita, but but not quite. Maybe some Neo Abs might be in this as well. Always have to save the uh, the, uh, the the girl that's tied up. Barbarian needs prizes. Here we got John Romita. This is John Romita cover in the great tr tradition of Conan. Got the wizard in the background there. You got uh, Val has moved on. You've now got Vincent uh, Alcazar and Steve uh, Gerber is writing this now. So three times he asked, and not so gently for my hand, and thrice I did refuse that I would endure no more, and that I am here because I am not in his bedchambers. I'm not sure what happened to this artist. He was, uh, saw him on a few things for a little while, and that was it. He got the Marvel Value Stamp. Issue number 29. There's the Watcher. More uh, giant dinosaurs. Very uh, triceratops, uh, gecko, uh, chameleon looking dinosaurs. We've got Cole the Conqueror. Got his own series shortly after uh, Creatures on the Loose by Bernie Wrightson. Uh, the Ross Andrew did the art on this, and this this just a detail on this, and for the for the colors also. And Wally Wood uh, was the inker on this, so all around, solid solid team. It's published uh, bi monthly, but. For some reason, after issue two, it was canceled. It came back because uh, issue two came out in 1971. Got Marie and John Severin doing the artwork at that point. 
There's the map, the time of King Cole. Okay, if you like sword and sorcery stuff, this is up your alley. But that was 71. This is a John Severin cover. And then it came back in July of 72. So it was gone for almost a year. Reprints uh, Marie's uh, map. You got False of Doom. He shows up in here. Who became his uh, most hated adversary. Behold the true face of False of Doom. Tries to cut his head off and it goes right through. You got this, uh, this, this royal blue, and again the the yellow and the red, and John Severin cover. He's got the babe in his arms, and again Marie and John Severin did the art. Gary Conway was the was the scripter. And then again, it was canceled. Well, wait a second. This is issue four. This is issue nine. So I can't say that. I spoke out of term. But again, uh, Marie and John stuck around for the book for quite a while. You got Cole the Conqueror. Got number number uh, 10 here. Again, this great cover. Uh, John has left, but Marie is still uh, penciling. Issue number 11 by this axe I rule. Mike Plug was brought in at this point. And, you know, they, they certainly struck it out of the park with, uh, with Plug. And then we go to issue 15. This has a ad for giant size Spider-Man. Again, you've got Ditko. You've got the giant size comics that they're pushing there. Here you've got Man Wolf. Is your Marvel value stamp? Man, I thought one of these other ones. Let me uh, pause this for a second and go check something. Okay, we're back. I, uh, when I looked through this issue, I missed something very important that's in this issue here. It's got a full-page ad for Amazing Spider-Man 122, which was the death of Norman Osborn, the Goblin. Of Gwen Stacy had just died the uh, issue before that. So this issue, for any reason at all, picking it up, I mean, if you're not just picking it up because it's a great issue, pick it up because of uh, this, this house ad in here for Amazing Spider-Man 122. The uh, Death of the Goblin with this great John Romita cover. Other than that, if you uh, like my video, certainly uh, subscribe. And you subscribe. Uh, when you subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Other than that, thank you. I appreciate you watching these things. I enjoy making them. Take care.